in last lecture we talked about the love story of sodium and glucose we named that story secondary activity absorption because in that story sodium with her power helped the poor glucose to take entry inside the luminal cells and then into the blood because the sodium had energy due to the sodium potassium pump and utilizing that energy sodium was moving inside the cell so the poor glucose and amino acid also took the chance and get and got entry into the cell and then finally into the blood now that story was secondary active reabsorption or core transport of sodium glucose or sodium amino acid because they shared the same ride which was the carrier protein on the luminal surface of the uh, tubule cells now today we will talk about the opposite story which you can call the hate story which is the secondary active secretion secondary active secretion and we call it counter transport counter transport now this story is pretty much same in which the sodium is moving again into the cells but in this time the energy used by the sodium while going inside is utilized to push or throw out the hydrogen out of the cells now to properly understand this drama you must remember that we are talking about urine formation urine formation by the kidneys and we have discussed some of the steps especially we have discussed filtration in detail because filtration is the first step of urine formation we discussed that inside the kidneys in the nephrons blood is coming in filtration of blood is occurring the filtrate then enters the proximal tubules of the nephrons once the filtrate has entered several substances are reabsorbed and several substances are excreted into the urine depending upon the need of substances some of the substances are reabsorbed into the blood and those substances which are not needed like creatinine and urea they are thrown out of the body and excreted now that reabsorption process was labeled as tubular reabsorption and we discussed in detail the tubular reabsorption basically was either active or passive in active reabsorption there was need of some energy and in passive reabsorption there was no need of energy then active reabsorption was primary active reabsorption and secondary active reabsorption in primary active reabsorption we discussed that due to direct direct breakdown of atp by the sodium potassium atpase sodium is thrown out so there is deficiency of sodium in the cells and the sodium from the lumen sodium from the tubule lumen enters into the cells of the tubule so sodium from the uh, lumen enters into the cells of the uh, tubule because sodium is thrown out so there is deficiency in their space and that sodium fills the space but that was primary active reabsorption in secondary active reabsorption the glucose and amino acids basically that was a love story between the glucose and the sodium and glucose and amino acid because the glucose and amino acid they also need energy to go uphill they want to go uphill into the cells because the concentration here is high and concentration here is low so they also need energy and that energy was given to them by the sodium because sodium is their girlfriend sodium is the girlfriend of glucose sodium is the girlfriend of amino acids but they are poor boyfriends they don't have money they don't have a ride so they were sharing this ride the carrier proteins with the sodium and they got entry into the cells now similarly similarly there is secondary active secretion secondary active secretion in which the hydrogen needs to go out of the cell the hydrogen the hydrogen has to be secreted from the blood it has to go into the lumen it has to be secreted rather than reabsorbed it has to be secreted rather than reabsorbed but this process is an active process this process is an active process because this process needs energy but there is no direct source of energy and the same old sodium potassium pump sodium potassium pump the rich father of the sodium will help sodium and when sodium is taking entry the energy utilized will be used the energy that uh, will be generated that is used to throw out hydrogen out of the cell it is as the hydrogen is as um, a villain in this drama and the, uh, the the sodium is the hero so basically uh, we will basically we made it the heroine rather than a hero but okay uh, we can just uh, focus on the secretion process and we just need to throw the hydrogen out of the cell and we need energy and there is no direct source of energy for the hydrogen and energy generated by the sodium potassium pump is being utilized so it is a secondary active secretion process it is not a reabsorption process because the sodium potassium pump is continuously throwing out sodium and pushing the potassium so sodium goes out of the cell there is again deficiency of cell in the uh, deficiency of sodium in the cells to fill this deficiency sodium from the lumen is going through the carrier but this time through a counter transport carrier protein counter transport carrier protein now these were the core transport carrier proteins 
they were co-transporting. They were transporting both substances in the same direction. This is the counter transport. This transport carrier protein will take the sodium inside, but will take the hydrogen outside because the, the, the sodium does not want to talk with the hydrogen because the sodium and hydrogen, they hate each other. So the hydrogen needs to be pushed out and the sodium needs to be pushed in and the energy will be generated by the sodium potassium pump. And that's why this is a secondary active reabsorption, uh, sorry, secondary active secretion. And in this um, process, is sodium goes inside and hydrogen goes outside and that's all about the secondary active secretion process which is an active process and helps in the urine formation thanks a lot for watching the video